Microplastics are everywhere, which is both a description of the number of stories and studies related to the phenomena and the content of those stories and studies, which attest to the pervasive nature of microplastics. Before we talk about what can be done, though, a quick explainer. Humans currently produce about 430 million tons of plastic waste each year, according to the United Nations. A large amount of that waste ends up degrading into microplastics, small particles that linger in our environment and can be consumed by animals and people. How do they form? Large plastics break down through physical abrasion, weathering, and other processes, releasing microplastics into rivers, oceans, groundwater, and the air. There are five different varieties. Fibers, commonly shed from clothes, these can be as big as a fifth of an inch. Fragments, created when larger plastics, such as water bottles, break down. Film, made from the degradation of larger plastic items. Foam, generated from food containers and disposable silverware. And microbeads, synthetically manufactured microplastics used in cosmetics and healthcare products, including hand sanitizer. Microplastics spread through the water, air, and even human bloodstream. They've been found everywhere from the de deepest oceanic trench in the world to the top of Mount Everest. In just the upper oceans alone, there are an estimated 24.4 trillion microplastics, according to Japanese researchers. Those microplastics are consumed by smaller animals, such as zooplankton, who are then eaten by larger animals. The particles stay in that larger animal's stomach and can be eventually passed up to humans. People inhale or ingest up to 114,000 microplastic particles per year through drinking, breathing, and eating, according to a 2019 study. Humans aren't just at risk of consuming regular microplastics, but also the more dangerous nanoplastics. Those particles are about 400 thousandths of an inch in size and can pass through the bloodstream to reach almost every single organ. Plastic particles have been found in a variety of human organs, including testicles, the liver, and lungs. They've even been found in the placenta and in the bodies of newborns. Joining us now to talk about the possible health risks from all this exposure to microplastics is Matthew Kempen. He's a professor at the University of New Mexico and the director of the school's Center for Metals in Biology and Medicine. Thank you so much for being with us. So what are the effects of micro and nanoplastics being present in the human body? John, thanks for having me and for that outstanding introduction. Uh, the harmful effects, the best research right now is coming from a group in Italy who published uh, showing that the, the amount of blood, uh, blood vessel content of plastics is associated with a threefold increase of potential heart attack three year, you know, within the next three years. Uh, that study has been sort of bolstered by a number of uh, animal research with controlled exposures and a number of um, cell culture studies that gives us compelling evidence that every organ in the body could be suffering at the concentrations uh, that we're seeing uh, now. So, Professor, as I sit here talking to you, is it possible to guess how, my, guess how much microplastics are inside me? I, I could, I could, I could wager a guess. All right, give me there. a shot. All right. Uh, so most of our organs seem to be hovering around 300 to 600 micrograms per gram, and that's probably difficult to understand. Um, it's it's a it's a small drop in every organ, probably, but when we look at the brain, we see about 10 times that amount, and we're talking about an, an adult human brain probably has around five to 10 grams of plastic. That's about the size of a plastic spoon, but they're nanoplastics, so you can't even see them without very elaborate, sophisticated scientific equipment. Well, that's disturbing. Uh, let me ask you this double question then. A, the larger societal one, what can be done to reduce um, these kinds of plastics? And, and then is there anything one can do if you've already got them as a part of your organs? Great questions. Let's, let's start with, yeah, the, the societal question is big. I, in my pers from my perspective, I feel that incineration of these plastics is going to be the best thing to do. And we need to consider more uh, aggressive construction and implementation of waste to energy treatment plants. Right now, half of all those plastics that you talked about, the, the more than one ton of plastics per person on this planet, it, it 
is already in the ground and it's already turning into microplastics. So even if we reduce or eliminate plastics, I, I think the UN goal is to eliminate plastic usage by 2040. Well, we still have billions of tons in the ground turning into microplastics. We haven't done, we haven't dented that growth uh, at all. So, so my fear is that over the next 20 to 40 years, we're going to see a uh, double, triple, quadruple the amount of plastics in our bodies, and there will be health effects that that stem from that. As for what we can do as individuals, I, right now the best advice that that our team has is to reduce the amount of fats and meats in your diet. The the biggest amount of uh, uptake into your body is through ingestion. We don't think that you know there, it's good advice not to use a plastic cutting board just because that's a piece of plastic that this planet probably doesn't need. But on the other hand, that's not really a great source for the generation of plastics that can, your body can absorb. So there's a number of pieces of advice out there that aren't necessarily mm -hmm. scientifically sound, but the, the dietary piece with uh, meats and fats is probably the best bet. Professor Matthew Camden, I feel like we're gonna be coming back to you on this one. Uh, thank you so much for being with us. My pleasure.